my name is Brian Weiss, and I'm going to talk to you about aliens. So, just so you know, I'm not going to talk about like conspiracy theories. I'm not here to tell you that little green men came in UFOs and built the pyramids. I'm just going to talk about basically the possibility and the consequences of us someday making contact with another advanced civilization. And, okay. So, any discussion about aliens is not complete without talking about the Drake Equation, created by Dr. Frank Drake in 1961. And basically, it looks a little confusing, but it's simple. If you're solving for n, the number of civilizations in the Milky Way that are advanced like our own, and basically, these are all the factors that go into it. You multiply them together for the probabilities. There's one important factor here, and that's time. Because we basically know, have a pretty good estimate, scientists have, of all these other factors. But time's the big one. Because, uh, for example, humans have been around for a while, but we've only been technologically advanced for about 100 or 200 years. And we're already starting to see signs of our uh, inevitable doom. Uh, potentially. We could be around for another 50 years, we could be around for 10 million years. So that's the big factor uh, that they don't really know what to plug in when solving. But basically the Drake equation, scientists have gotten it down to the tiny range of somewhere between 0 and 36 million civilizations in our Milky Way that are like our own. So if there's 36 million uh, alien civilizations out there, let's look for them. So we talk about NASA. Uh, NASA, of course, goes out and explores and trying to map our galaxy with uh, space telescopes, the Hubble Space Telescope, the Kepler uh, Space Telescope, those are some big ones. They get imagery, discover planets, discover solar systems, and we're basically mapping out the physical content of our galaxy. Then there's SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. <laughs> That is a program that began in 1957. Now it's an institute in California since 1984. And basically what they do is they listen for abnormal radio waves coming in from different parts of our galaxy that they think could be messages from alien civilizations. Now you might be wondering, have we ever gotten an abnormal wave, radio wave? Yes, one time. It was the wow signal. It was August 15, 1977, just a normal day. And normal guy Jerry Emin was just sitting at his desk, and suddenly this random jumble of letters and numbers came up, and for some reason he was able to figure out that it meant that a 72 second long uh, abnormal radio signal was coming in from the Orion Belt. He circled it and wrote, wow. And at the time it was a really big deal because this is exactly what we have been looking for. They thought that it was a message from aliens. Now, the downside is it's been 40 years since then, and we have been listening intently to that part of the galaxy, and there's been absolutely nothing since. So it could have been uh, a military satellite, it could have been a comet, it could have been just space junk messing up the radio waves, or it could have been aliens. But it's not, uh, by any means, great evidence. So, you know, 60 years, there hasn't been any real evidence. So it might make you wonder, where is everybody? Well, Enrico Fermi asked the same question, Italian physicist and architect of the atomic bomb. And so he basically said, if the Drake equation says there could be 36 million civilizations out there, where are they? We've been looking for them. And it might seem like a really simple question, but at the time, for some reason, all the scientists were convinced we were going to find aliens, it was going to happen. And so he basically said, hold on, where have they been? And he got an entire uh, a paradox named after him just for saying that. It's pretty cool. So uh, there's some possible explanations or solutions to the fact that we haven't uh, made contact yet. And just here are a few. One is that everybody's listening, nobody's talking. So basically, you know, humans, we've been listening for these radio waves. We haven't been sending anything out. It's possible that we have all these different civilizations throughout the galaxy, and we're all sitting there in silence, just waiting to hear from somebody else. Another is that they're at the edge of the galaxy. This one's pretty interesting because humans have been technologically advanced for not very long now, and we're already starting to see the effects of climate change, global warming. So if there's a really advanced alien civilization out there, they might have overheated their planet and had to travel out to the edge of the galaxy where it's cooler and where they can, wait, where they can survive now. And so now they're way far away and can't really uh, deal with us. That's, again, just a possibility. 
Another is that we can't understand their messages. We're listening for radio signals. Why radio signals? Well, they could send them, but it might be something way advanced that we can't even figure out. And they're just sending us message after message, and we're completely oblivious to it because we don't have the technology to receive it. And the last possibility uh, is that they're observing us. They discovered us a long time ago. They're way more advanced, and they're waiting for us to get to the point of technological advancement that we're even worth talking to. So I'm going to talk about that possibility. What if the day comes? What if we advance technologically? It's an exponential curve, and we're just at the beginning, and we're going to start <coughs> getting really, really advanced in technology. So what if they contact us? Well, they would still be certainly more advanced than us. They'd uh, give us all their technology. There would be absolutely a culture shock if you think about the different civilizations within Earth when they met. Bad things have always happened. Uh, but scientists do believe that if aliens came and contacted us, for them to have the technology to travel intergalactically and to come uh, meet us and contact us, they probably would be friendly. And the reason for that is that they'd have such advanced technolo technology that they basically uh, eliminated the concept of scarcity in, the, in their resources. And everyone has enough, and there's no more competition, there's no more war, and they've kind of transcended morality. And you can kind of see that in the human race because we're advancing morally, and so it's possible that they have gotten to that point that they want to help us. It would certainly be the end of society as we know it. And a really interesting concept there is, you know, now on Earth we identify ourselves with race, religion, and maybe if we met this group of others, of aliens, maybe we'd instead identify first as humans and come together as a planet and become a unified human race when you put someone who's even more different out there. So another possibility, I think this is less likely, but what if we find them? What if they're out there, less advanced than us, and we go and we find them? So how are we going to communicate our peaceful intentions? It's a pretty difficult question because, you know, a friendly wave in our language might be a declaration of war on their planet. Uh, who's our ambassador? Who's our spokesperson? Is it the President of the United States? Would it be the United Nations? Should we create, you know, a group of people whose role is to communicate with the aliens. I know it sounds kind of far-fetched, but if we're going out and exploring space now, we should probably, you know, as an international community, we should have stuff in place because if we do uh, encounter them without any, any agreement in place of who's going to communicate and who's going to do what, then it could get ugly fast. And we would have the responsibility of taking them under our wing. If they're less advanced than us, we would advance them technologically, maybe morally, maybe they're doing all sorts of terrible things. And so it would be, we might uh, try to play a role similar to that of European settlers uh, when they came all over the world. And the other, the other possibility that I think is interesting is what if we go out and we explore and explore and we never find them and we decide that there are no aliens out there and we're completely alone. <coughs> And I think that's really uh, scary to think about because, you know, life is something that we, we've always thought is out there. And in this giant galaxy, you would assume that there would be all sorts of civilizations out there. And it would definitely change the way we think because life would be so rare and basically so precious, just uh, our culture, our society. We would want to take care of it for the good of the galaxy. We would owe it, essentially to the galaxy. If we're the only advanced civilization, we would need to stay alive, take better care of our people, take better care of our environment to ensure that we last for a really long time and we don't end up killing ourselves or each other and then there's just nothing left in, in terms of intelligent life. So I'm going to finish with the question, are we ready? Are we ready for any of this? And the answer is an astounding no. So the three possibilities that I brought up were um, them visiting us, us visiting them, or us never finding them. So are we ready for aliens to come and visit us? And the answer is absolutely not. Our technology is just at the beginning of this exponential curve. We haven't prepared ourselves uh, as a society, and they would just we would be overwhelmed by the technology that they would bring to us. 
Are we ready to go out and meet the less advanced aliens? Definitely not, because our ethics are at the very best imperfect. We would probably end up arguing amongst ourselves, trying to colonize, and tearing down their entire civilization, because we have a track record of that. And finally, are we ready to say, okay, we've been listening for 60 years, we've gotten absolutely nothing, is there no one out there? And I think the answer is definitely no. 60 years might seem like a long time, but really we're just getting started. We're entering into the era of, science, uh, or of space exploration, and I think that's really uh, cool, and it's what I want to leave you with, this idea that our generation may be the generation that finally answers the question of are we alone. And it's a really exciting time to be alive, I think, and I think that our, uh, sorry, I think that we are going to answer that question sometime in the next 50, 100, 200 years, sometime very soon. As we go out, we will advance technologically, we'll advance morally, and I think that the answer is close. And it's something that we really begin thinking about as a society. So thank you. So I, they probably wouldn't be like little green people. They'd probably be pretty similar looking to us. Um, yeah, definitely not the sort of stuff you see in like the science fiction movies. Yep. Um, what about the possibility that um, our curiosity in terms of our search for them is uh, exclusively human trait and that there's, they don't see any possible benefit in exploring further? And they're just going to be out there forever because they're more complex and, you know, they're essentially right. living in utopia and we're not. Like, what do you right. Think like they, yeah, yeah, it's a great question of whether they basically, like, have no incentive to ever come into contact with us. And I think that's definitely a possibility that's been spoken about. Um, humans, the thing is, uh, humans really, really want to explore, so... I guess it would be likely, you know, with curiosity that they would eventually contact us if there are a lot of civilizations out there. It only takes one. So that would kind of be my answer to that. Yeah. Um, has the SETI Institute considered other galaxies apart from the Milky Way? Um, not really, because once you get, like, way out there, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to detect stuff. It's hard to see stuff. It's, we want to kind of keep it, like, closer because if, if you... I don't know. We're trying to like come into contact with aliens that would maybe be like sort of close by in the in the scale of the universe. Yeah. Let's say if the alien civilizations were less advanced than us, yeah. who would own the planets first of all? Would it be the entire Earth or just countries, for example, like European colonization? Right, yeah, well that's a great question and that's kind of what I touched on is that, like, we're not at that point. I think what would happen is, you know, we'd end up kind of fighting over things with, like, China or Russia or all these countries uh, would want to colonize and would want to claim it as their territory. So I think, again, we're not ready to go out and do that. We need to come together as a planet and as a human race to be able to go talk to them. Uh, um, I just. I don't understand why they think they would necessarily be so friendly, because if you look at what humans are, we're probably the most terrifying thing most things have ever seen. We kill each other sometimes, like, we used to do it for fun, the Romans did that. We can survive anywhere, and we can send people into space who know they're probably going to die, and then when they don't, we're like, cool, let's do it again. It, we don't yeah. make sense, we don't think, why would they not see that and say, these guys are a liability. Well, that's a good question, but I think that in terms of them being friendly, I think, you know, once, like humans aren't great, but we've been advancing morally. And I think, you know, if they're a lot in front of us, they could be, you know, even further ahead in terms of morality, and they could try to help us. I don't think they would want to, you know, eradicate a civilization, you know, they might think that we're pretty bad, but they'd probably try to help us. Um, you know, in terms of valuing culture, really, you know, humans 
for the most part, don't destroy culture of like ancient civilizations, artifacts. They might view it as something that they want to keep going for history. What's your view on the government's role during the process? Because a lot of people yeah. think that they like hide information. Yeah. Um, well, personally, I think it would be pretty difficult to like hide information on a large scale because a lot of people would know about it. It's definitely possible. Um, but I think that it would be something, in my opinion, it's something that the government would tell the people. Um, they say they would. I, 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 I don't know. I would say it's there are a lot of normal people in government, uh, you know, and they, they would someone would leak it out even if they tried to cover it up. In my opinion, yeah. well, you were talking about how this would have such a huge impact on society; it would change everything as we know it. So, with that being said, why would the government want to release that? Because they don't want to create this mass panic, and they don't want to lead to the destruction of you know everything. Yeah. So maybe ignorance is bliss. Well, yeah, if uh, that's, you know, that's, that's something a lot of people think, and I, I can't discount that as a possibility, but just the way I see it is that, like, so many people would have to know. It would be such a big cover-up. It would be kind of, Im not impossible, but it would be really difficult to keep all those people quiet about it. People going in and coming out of government afterwards and, and would just, you know, tell your friends, and then people would find out, I, I think, yeah. Do you think we're even going to make it to this point? I mean, with the rate that we're going now, our resources are depleting. So are we going to be alive at that time? To that's a make contact? Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. And that's something that's being considered, because there could, again, there could be civilizations in the past or in the future that we never really get to interact with, because these, these civilizations, we don't know where we're going. There are a lot of, you know, problems, climate change, nuclear warfare. There are a lot of things that could destroy us very soon. And it might be that these advanced civilizations pop up and go away after a few hundred years. 